My Three Sons. Starring Fred McMurray. And as Uncle Charlie, William Demarest. She, she managed to get Ernie to tell her a bedtime story. Good. What are you looking for? Well, I was just seeing if there's something wrong with this club. I seem to slice every shot I hit with it lately. Oh, well, then there's definitely something wrong with it. I mean, my husband doesn't slice unless there's something wrong with the club. <laughs> okay, Steve. When do I get my kitchen back? Who has it, Charlie? Chip and Polly, that's who's got it. They started housekeeping on my kitchen table with that stupid homework. I can think of worse crimes, can't you, Uncle Charlie? Sure, but didn't they ever hear of the public library? Well, we thought we'd go out for a while and air out our heads. I'm sure Charlie will appreciate it. See you later. I'll see you. Bye. Bye. As far as I'm concerned, Chip is a wrung out duck. <laughs> oh, Charlie, what a terrible way of saying that he's in love. Words are just the messengers of thought, Barbara. <laughs> Undoubtedly, something you picked up in Kowloon. Right. And if you ask me, she's more of a wrung out duck than he is. <laughs> I think Charlie's more right than he thinks he is. About what? Well, I have a feeling those two wrung-out ducks are very close to flying away for the winter. Well, darling, uh, it's still a long time till winter. Barbara, take a look at that shaft. Do you think it's straight? Crooked as a corkscrew. Really? No. Well, why didn't you go out and buy that new set of irons anyway? <laughs> it's weird, isn't it? What? Well, that a rotten thing like homework brought us together? Well, then it isn't so rotten. Chip Douglas, that's the most romantic thing you've ever said to me. Is it? Yeah, I know you're not the talking type, Chip, with a big line, and I accept that. Someday when we're married, I'll appreciate how honest you are. Well, don't you accept it now? Sure. Chip, isn't that the same car? Yeah, I recognize the guy. That's the third time we've seen him. He parked near us when we went to the market for Uncle Charlie, and he was waiting outside campus when you picked me up from the chem lab. I wonder what he's doing up here. You know what I think? I think he's following us. I sure are staying out in the open for somebody who's following us. I don't care. He's following us. I'm scared. We don't know the guy's following us. Well, let's go back to your house and see. That's kind of dumb. Please, let's get out of here. Okay. Chip, we just got our picture back. Dad, a road. guy's following us. Following us? Are you sure? We're sure, Mr. Douglas. He's driving a convertible. Hey, the kid's right, Steve. I'll get a baseball bat and we'll grab him. Well, now, wait a minute, Chuck. <laughs> Chip, how long has this been going on? We don't know, but we've seen him three times. And tonight, when we parked uh, someplace, he <laughs> followed us home. Well, we better find out what's happening, don't you, Yeah. Well, don't you think it might be better if we call the police? I don't know, Barbara. I'll we'll get it back. say yes. <laughs> Waiting for somebody? I mean, uh, why are you parked out here this time of night? Any law against that? 
Come on, don't get smart, Alice. I understand you've been following this young man and his girlfriend. Is that true? Yeah, I've been hired. I've been following them for a week. Man, a week? Why? Who hired you? Well, I'm not at liberty to divulge that. Here's my operator's badge. I'm a private investigator. If you don't tell us who hired you, I'm afraid we're going to have to call the police. Look, in my job, I could lose my license for telling. But let me tell you this. It's nothing to worry about. No gamblers, no hoods, nothing like that. Why would you possibly want to follow two college kids around? Tell you what I'm going to do. I'm taking myself off the case right now, OK? It's the last you see to me, young man. Well, if we see you again, we'll call the police. Is that clear? But we may work you over a little bit first. <laughs> Goodbye, gentlemen. He was a private investigator. Yeah, we, uh, we got all the information we could. Yeah, but Steve wouldn't let me work a moment. Oh, I forgot the bat. It wasn't. Oh, private eye or something. Nothing to worry about, Polly. He took himself off the case. What case? Somebody was having you follow, Polly. Anyway, it's all over. I better take you home. She gets scared real easy. How would anybody want to have us followed? Well, maybe somebody's idea of a joke. Good night. See, that guy comes back, I'll hit him for extra bases. <laughs> See, now that they're gone, Dad, what do you think that was all about? It's a good question, huh? Well, he's not following us. I couldn't sleep last night. It's nothing to be scared about. I wasn't scared so much. I was thinking about how you took over, how you protected me, told your parents you better get me home. You know something, Chip? What? I think you love me. I think you're right. Dad, what would you say if Polly and I eloped sort of? Eloped? Well, Chip, uh, for one thing, you don't elope, sort of. And uh, for another thing, uh, it's not really an elopement if you tell the parents. And, well, you just told me. Yeah, but we can't tell her folks. Her dad would go up and smoke or croak or have me arrested or something. And I don't know how her mother would act. But, Chip, uh, an elopement is a very sudden thing. Sometimes it's so sudden that the people involved haven't really thought the whole thing out. We've thought it out pretty well, Dad. I've saved up some money from my after-school and summer jobs, and oh, Polly has some government bonds. But not really enough to start two lives on you. Yeah, but they have this deal over at school. We're married couples living in a dorm, and it's real cheap. Of course, you know, 18 is very young to get married. Well, sure. Chip, uh... Wouldn't Polly rather have a nice wedding and, uh, well, maybe a year or two? I don't think so, Dad. She's afraid her dad will try and break us up again. She thinks, oh, we think, that we ought to just up and elope. Are you quite sure Polly isn't just trying to move out of a home where she hasn't been too happy? We face that too, Dad. The answer is yes, that's part of it. But not all of it. Right. Well, sure, she said, let's elope lots of times, and I never really paid any attention. The thing that knocked me out was, uh, I really liked the idea. Dad, I'm going to say something that sounds pretty dumb. I love her. I'm sure you do, Chip. Dad, will you give me permission to get married? Chip, I want you to think. Will you, Dad? That's what you really want, Chip. A written permission? All right. Notarized? Notarized? Yeah, I checked into it. It's got to be notarized. Okay. But, Chip, before you do anything as sudden as eloping, I want you to do one thing. A what? Talk to her father. Uh, Dad, I... Now, now, wait a minute. 
simply find out how he feels about an early wedding, say, in a year or two. Maybe you'll find out he doesn't mind. He don't mind, Dad. Well, let's put it this way. I'd hate to be a father who wasn't even consulted and found that somebody had taken my daughter out of my home. I think he's entitled to more consideration than that, don't you? Yeah, maybe you're right. Just talk to him, that's all I ask. Here you are, Chip. Thanks. My mouth keeps getting kind of dry. <laughs> Mr. Williams should be home any minute. Oh, where's Pauline? She has a late chem lab on Fridays. Oh, that's... that's right, I forgot. Hello, Tom. Uh, Chip Douglas is here to talk to us. That's fine. I'd like to talk to him, too. Uh, sir, I... Sit down, uh, Richard. Uh, Tom. Uh, maybe you better sit down, too. Tom, really, can't this wait? I mean, Chip's here to talk to us about something he feels is important. Well, yeah, this is important, too, Margaret. You'll find this interesting, Richard. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, perhaps you would like to know how some of your daughter's homework time was spent, Margaret. Listen to this. Tuesday last, subject left campus in the company of young man known as R.D. at 314. At 3.23, subject and R.D. entered the honeycomb refreshment stand. At 5.05, subject accompanied R.D. to his home, where she did not reappear until 10.10. Tom, what's the point of all this? I mean, who's the subject and who's R.D.? Oh, no, Tom. Oh, yes, Margaret. You were the one who had us followed. Sit down, Richard. No, I won't sit down. You scared your daughter half to death. You know that, Mr. Williams? Tom, do you mean you actually had your own daughter followed? N now hold it, both of you. Man, do I feel sorry for you, Mr. Williams. And am I proud of my father? Richard! Richard, don't come back! I think Chip said it just right. Man, do I feel sorry for you. Who says I told you so? But you told me so. Yeah, he's really in love with Polly and wants to marry her. And I could have sworn it was one of those going steady things at the very most. Well, when you think about it, darling, they can't really elope. I mean, they have to have permission, don't they? Th th that's right. I mean, they're both 18 and... They... Steve, you gave your permission. Yeah, notarized. Steve! But Chip promised me he'd talk to Mr. Williams. Ah, oh, well, knowing Mr. Williams, that settles that. But for the time being. I hope. Well, should we go to the movie, or should we stay home and worry about you? Well, why don't we go to the movie and worry about you? <laughs> Good thing. Dad? Mom? They went to a movie. Where's Uncle Charlie? Charlie's in his bedroom asleep. How? Oh. He said, anybody wakes him up, they're gonna get killed. But who's babysitting him? Uncle Charlie and Tramp. He's asleep, too. Uh, Dodie, get me something to write on. I gotta leave a note for Mom and Dad. Okay. Is Purple okay? Yeah, anything's fine. You going someplace? Yeah, I'm going someplace. Give this to Dad when he comes to tuck in tonight, okay? Okay. I'll make sure. I'll see you later. Don't forget to give Dad that note. Boy, it'll sure be neat when I learn to read something besides printing. <laughs> Chip? What were you doing at the window, darling? Shh. We're talking 
so loud. Want your dad to hear us? Stop bullying. Oh. Well, you want to go? Yeah, but not without this first. Hey, wow, Polly. Come on. It must mean Dad and Mom. He was obviously in a hurry. Polly and I are eloping. Came to talk to you, but you were gone. Don't worry, love, Chip. Don't worry. Well, Mr. Williams must have thrown a tantrum. I mean, maybe Chip did this out of sheer defiance. No, no, Chip isn't like that. Steve, what are we going to do? Well, in the first place, I wouldn't know where to start looking for them. So I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're, we're going to brush our teeth as usual, and then we're going to go to bed as usual, and, and we'll lie there and worry. Like we did in the movie. <laughs> Hello, Williams. Steve, it's 4 o'clock in the morning. Yes, I, I know it is. Well, where is she? I looked in her room. She didn't come home. Is it Chip? Uh, no, it was Polly's father. Uh, uh, then uh, Polly didn't leave you a note. A note? What note? Well, uh, Tom, I'm afraid they've eloped. Eloped? Well, yes. You see... I'll be right over. Oh, now, wait a minute, Tom. I... Over. Well, call him back. Honey, I think the least we can do for the father of a daughter who's just eloped with our son is to listen to him. <laughs> can I see that note again, Steve? How do you like that, Margaret? They get a note and we don't. You raise a girl, you give her a nice home, you try to give her the right values, and what happens? She runs off with the first kid that comes along. I wouldn't exactly call Chip the first kid who came along, Mr. Williams. I'm sorry, I'm not using my words too carefully this morning. How do you like it, Margaret? They get a note, and we don't. That's hardly the point, is it, Tom? She's gone. But it's simple. It's simple. We'll have it annulled. Now, where did they go? I have no idea where they went, Tom. And I don't think it'd be too smart to have the marriage annulled. Not too smart, huh? Well, it's not your daughter who ran away with the first... Look, my daughter is gone! She's only 18 years old. She's too young to be married. I'm going to have the thing annulled. I don't agree with you. I had a long talk with Chip. You and your boy had a nice, cozy little chat about how he would run off with my daughter. Is that it, Steve? We talked, and I gave him my permission. You gave him your permission? Notarized. And I told him to go and talk to you about it before he did anything. Which he did. Now, Margaret, you stay out of this, please. No, Tom. Chip came over to talk to you, but you wouldn't let him. Margaret, I am trying to settle your daughter's future. You did. You settled it the minute you told Chip you had them followed. Uh, look, a father, a father does these things, Steve. Now, don't try to make me feel guilty. I'm still in charge of my daughter's welfare. You can make this thing legal for Chip, but Polly's only 18 and she still needs parental permission to be married. Now, whether you like it or not, I'm gonna have that thing annulled. No, Tom. No, what do you mean, no? Why not? Because I gave her my permission. Notarized. I 
your daughter's a married woman, Tom. Face it. And may I say something else? I couldn't have found a better son-in-law if I'd gone out and picked him myself. Thank you. We feel the same way about Polly. They're both bright kids, Tom. They'll do just fine. And now they have two families to fall back on. Mr. Williams. Tom. He just can't believe that his wife could have done a thing like this to him. Well, she did it because she loves him. Tom, you were destroying yourself with the idea of losing Polly. You were also destroying Polly. And me. Maybe now we can start over again, huh? Come on, darling. Let's go home. Probably still say those kids are gonna do just fine. Uh, maybe. It'll take a little time for me to get used to the idea. How do grandchildren strike you? Look, I'm too young for grandchildren. I'm only... <laughs> and she's too young to be a grandmother. <laughs> Thank you, darling. Don't change too suddenly. I don't think I could stand it. Good night, Bob. Good night, Steve. Good night. Well, darling, this was a night I wouldn't care to repeat. <laughs> oh, honey, I want to tell you that you showed admirable restraint. Now, anybody else would have, uh, oh, how does Charlie put it, uh, belted him in the mouth. <laughs> you know, darling, uh, a terrible thought just occurred to me. What's that? I think Williams and I are now related. 